Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential equation. We have z to the power z to the power z to the power z dot 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 so on and so forth it goes on forever equals i and we're going to be solving for z values. Now why is one of the z's red? just that you can kind of distinguish. They're all the same pretty much. So this is kind of like an exponential tower. Just for fun, I wanted to change the color. You know why? Because I can. All right, great. So we have this infinite exponential tower of Z's and the whole thing is equal to I, which is the imaginary unit. How do you solve for Z? Well, here's the thing with infinite expressions and obviously there's something about convergence, some discussion needs to be made, but we're going to keep it very non-rigorous. I know some people are very rigorous and they're not going to like it, but I hope you like it. This is just for general public. Okay, great. So since z to the power z to the power z, that exponential tower is equivalent to i, we can go ahead and do the, uh, do the following. Let me go ahead and rewrite this on a darker background because that was my... Uh, the image that I used for the thumbnail and I just was kind of lazy and wanted to use the same one. Okay, that's why it's kind of light background on the first page. By the way, there's no way to make Google Docs uh, different colors on different pages. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but it hasn't been uh, provided, that property feature, whatever. But you can kind of get away with, you know, using some image or table or whatever. Anyways, that's kind of sad, I think, for Google Docs, but anyways. What can you do? So we have this infinite thing, and I noticed that if I take this exponent, just ignore the base and take everything else, it's actually the same thing as the original. By the way, when I write something like z to the power z to the power z, that does not mean z to the z and then to the z, because this would be z to the z squared. These two are not equal. And obviously when you have something like this, you mean this is going to be in parentheses, and that's going to be in parentheses, so on and so forth. You get the idea? Obviously, it, some people find it ambiguous, uh, not very clear, so on and so forth. But anyways, this is understood most of the time. So since the whole thing is equal to i, that exponent is the same as the whole thing, but it's also equal to i. So this kind of brings us to a finite result, which is z to the power i equals i. Now, a million dollar question is, the first equation has infinitely many z's, the second one only has one z, do they have the same solutions? Or is the, does the first one have more solutions than the second one? Those are really good questions. And at this point, you might be thinking, hey, let's keep it simple, raise both sides to the power of 1 over i, and we can get the answer right away, z equals i to the power 1 over i, what is that equal to? We don't care, right? That's kind of like a very simplistic way of writing it. Does that work all the time? That's a good question, because one of the things you need to be careful about is when you have something like a to the b to the c, this does not always hold for complex numbers. So in order to be able to cancel out i and 1 over i, you do need to multiply them together, but this property doesn't always hold. And you might find some counterexamples that shows it doesn't work, but let's uh, get back to our problem. So instead of doing this, instead of doing this, we're going to handle it in a more professional way or maybe in a nicer way, I should say. Not necessarily very rigorous and professional, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the definition of complex exponentiation. What is z to the power w? You hopefully know what it is, but if not, then it can be written as an exponential. e to the power w ln z. And you might be wondering, what is ln of a complex number? And I'll give you the definition. ln of a complex number is, remember, z is a complex number. So you're talking about uh, not just like a real logarithm, but a complex logarithm here. So we can write it as ln of the absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. This could probably be written in a different way if you just defined the absolute value of z as r and the argument of z as theta, then ln z can be written as ln r plus i theta, which is kind of like a more compact form. Make sense? Great. So obviously z can also be replaced with a plus pi, and then you can kind of think about ln of 
a plus bi. And notice that this is on the set of complex numbers, therefore we can also use negative real numbers in this case. For example, if a is negative and b is zero, we can ln a negative number such as what is ln negative one, what is ln uh, negative whatever, or even negative i, we can just ln it by using this definition. Make sense? Okay, but the only thing you can't do, what is the only number you can't natural log? That will be for you to find out. Okay, great, so we got these definitions. Let's go ahead and use both of them for our problem. So we have z to the i, and z to the i can be written as e to the power i ln z. And that's equal to i. Awesome. We're going to get to ln z a little later. Let's go ahead and just figure this out. I have an exponential on the left and i on the right. So let's go ahead and uh, use the polar form for i. You'll hopefully remember we've done this a few times. i is going to appear here on the imaginary axis because it's imaginary, right? No real part. And then its argument is going to be pi over 2. That's the principal argument. And obviously, you can add multiples of 2 pi, which I'm going to include. Okay? So let's do it. And the modulus, obviously, is 1. Its distance from 0 is 1 unit. So e to the i ln z equals i, which can be written as e to the power i times the theta, which is pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. So far, so good. Awesome. Let's go ahead and cancel something out, like i. We can do that. And since we have e on both sides, we can basically natural log, and then we're going to get the following. ln z equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. By the way, we don't have to do this because if you really think about it, like if you're careful, you hopefully noticed, I didn't at first, e to the ln z becomes z. Right? So this is z equals the answer right away. Basically, we get the answer even without natural logging both sides because it's already done. Okay? Make sense? So this should give us the answer. But what happens for special cases? For example, if n is 0, then z is going to be e to the power pi over 2, which is a real number. By the way, all the values of z are real. How come we can get an i from there? You just take a real number and just stack them up like a z to the power z to the power z dot 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 and you get an imaginary number. Okay, this has something to do with the uh, convergence of something like y to the y to the y. If you set that equal to x, call this x because that's the same thing. And then you get y to the x equals x which implies y equals x to the power 1 over x. And then look at the derivative of this function look at the maximum, minimum, so on and so forth, and hopefully you'll get a better idea what is going on here. Obviously, this is not real. Is this for real? No. It is for complex numbers and imaginary numbers. Great. So, uh, I don't know if I include a solution from Wolfram Alpha. Let's check it out. Yes, I did. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.